Did you know? In May 2025 alone, over 18 billion transactions were made through UPI. The UPI technology of India is uh, going to be very helpful to other nations. I live in India and I use UPI every day, not once, but maybe ten times. <laughs> very impressed by your UP Unified Payments Interface, a digital instant payment system. If, if you would just buy fruits on the street, I thought this would be impossible in Germany. Millions use it every day, but we also watched that closely, and we did a big jump. compared to our speed here uh, in Germany what started back in 2026 as a modest payment interface has now revolutionized how 1.4 billion people transact but how did india a largely cash dominated economy pull off one of the most historic success in the digital payment sector today we'll uncover the journey the strategy and the global impact of UPI unified payment interface i remember back in 2015 when my friend and i used to debate how china's economic growth has been impacted by their transaction payment system then comes UPI which changes india's payment infrastructure UPI stands for unified payment interface think of it as a digital highway that lets you send money from one bank account to another instantly anytime anywhere you don't need to remember long account numbers just a phone number a UPI ID or even a scanned QR code is all that you need launched in 2016 by the NPCI National Payment Corporation of India UPI was aimed to simplify and democratize the payment. Unlike digital wallet, UPI connects directly to your bank account. No need of preload money, no extra steps, just seamless real-time bank-to-bank transfers. To understand UPI's success, we need to see what came before UPI. In 2014, the government of India launched Digital India Initiative. This aimed to connect every Indian to internet, improve digital infrastructure and bring more people into the financial system. The key foundations were laid: Jan Dhan Yojana and the Aadhaar. The combination of both led to a massive success. Until 2014, only 35% of Indian adults had a bank account. The government then took on the challenge of banking the unbanked. In the last decade, an incredible 53 crore accounts have been opened under this scheme. What is really fascinating in this whole story of Janthan Yojana was this coinage of a term called the Jan Trinity, Janthan Aadhar Mobile, mm-hmm. and I think that's been a fabulous story. Under the Janthan Yojana, over 400 million bank accounts were opened for the unbanked, and under the Aadhar. 1.3 billion people were registered and mobile and internet penetration to that you've got the perfect combination required for digital transformation the npci stepped in with upi as the glue that tied these elements together let's see what led to upi's growth over the years in 2016 upi started with just 21 banks and a few hundred thousand transactions but then came 2017 google pay formerly known as tez phone pay and paytm adopted upi suddenly everyone had the access to zero cost transactions on a digital platform this was further enhanced by the demonetization move by the government that led to major curb of currency in india then 2020 happened the pandemic Average daily transactions on India's Unified Payment Interface, or UPI, surged over eightfold this year since the pandemic. It rose from 16 million in September 2020 to over 500 million by September 2024. Contactless payment weren't just convenient; they were essential. UPI exploded. By 2021, UPI crossed 4 billion monthly transactions. 
and by 2025, over 15 billion transactions each month. UPI didn't just scale, it transformed the way India transacted. From roadside vendors to multinational retailers. But why did UPI succeed in a such a large scale? Several factors made UPI unbeatable. Number one, free and real time, no transaction fees and instant settlement. Second, open architecture, any bank or any app could integrate it seamlessly. The third being, it was secure with two-factor authentication inbuilt. It had a simple user interface, just scan and pay, no technology required. Even a fruit vendor or a barber could accept digital payment by just a QR code. Also, the government and the regulators backing meant a smooth scaling. UPI wasn't owned by a private company. It was built for public use and that made all the difference in the world. UPI has been more than just a financial tool. It's been a social leveler. Rural areas saw digital inclusion like never before. Women, gig workers and micro entrepreneurs gained financial autonomy. Small businesses saved on payment processing fees. The government used UPI for direct benefit transfers, cutting corruption to a major extent. And globally, countries like Singapore, UAE and the Bhutan have started collaborating with NPCI or exploring similar models. UPI is a part of India sector, a suit of open digital infrastructure that's changing how nations think about public tech. UPI's result wasn't just accidental. It was a result of a visionary policy backed by solid engineering and right socio-economic conditions. So what exactly worked for UPI? Unlike closed ecosystem, UPI was interoperable from day one. Meaning, a user on Google Pay could just send money to someone on Phone Pay or Paytm without any hassle. That openness accelerated mass adoption. Fintech companies didn't need to build their own payment rails. They could plug into UPI using banks as sponsors. This allowed startups to innovate on top of a common infrastructure, lowering costs and boosting competition. Banks were quickly onboarded. Within a few years, hundreds of banks had live UPI support. This meant users didn't need a new wallet. Just their existing bank account would be sufficient. But every mass disruption comes with criticism and challenges. UPI was no different. UPI's journey hasn't been flawless. The first reason being, there are two major apps, Google Pay and Phone Pay. They still dominate over 80% of the market. Secondly, banks face infrastructure strain due to high volume. App developers struggle with zero monetization despite huge user base. Privacy concerns remain, especially as digital footprint grows. Even with these issues, UPI continues to evolve, with UPI Lite, UPI Credit, and even international UPI now on the roadmap. UPI isn't just a payment tool. It's a blueprint for inclusive, scalable, and digital public infrastructure. With ongoing innovations and global collaborations, UPI could soon be world's payment language. So what can other countries learn from India's digital revolution? That technology, when reliable, secure and inclusive, can transform an entire economy. If you found valuable insights from this video, make sure to hit that like button. And in the comments, I would want to know what are your thoughts on India's digital revolution. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Until next time.